Um, hi everybody, this is Bashira, and for my week 8 case analysis, number 2, um, of course focusing in on my workplace and my profession, uh, which is so it's going to be digital transformation in East Feliciana School District. I particularly work in Clinton Elementary School within the district. So just a little bit of background information about our district. So we, we are a rural school district. Um, I work in the very countryside of Clinton, um, East Feliciana Parish. We are spread out across three cities, Slaughter, Clinton, and Jackson. And there are seven schools within the district with a total of 2,014 students. 58% um, of families are considered low income and 82% are considered economically disadvantaged. So I'm going to be analyzing the current status of multiple components of um, innovative technology within education because uh, we know that um, innovation needs to take place at multiple levels and across the board when it comes to education um, in order for the technology to really be effective. Um, so of course technology leadership, digital transformation and teaching, learning, operation, administration and communication. And we'll talk about some challenges and opportunities that exist uh, within my district and um, yeah, how we could possibly overcome those. So the current status of, of um, technology leadership. So I do know that the, the technology department is currently in transformation. To be quite frank, it's um, been an ongoing process for the last few years, but because we've had some um, major changes with regards to superintendent, with regards to um, board members, and things of that nature, some certain plans of the district have had been placed on the on the back burner, um, and so the last um, complete and holistic plan that was created for the technology department was the plan created in two thousand and six from two thousand and seven to two thousand and fourteen. This plan is still currently um, in use, even though it is outdated. Um, uh, so like I mentioned, the department is currently in, in transformation. The district is currently assessing how best to completely rebuild the department of technology and um, create its own innovation sector that can be in alignment with ISTE and can be an alignment with the the national technology standards as, as well um, and as you can see those are the current roles in our technology department there's only three roles in the technology department held by three um, staff members or personnel the operations ancillary services supervisor the technology maintenance uh, person and the instructional support specialist whom I have personally never had any uh, interactions with but I know that the technology maintenance person he he handles all the um, tech maintenance requests IT maintenance requests um, for broadbanding and for access Wi-Fi access for the school etc um, the operations ancillary services supervisor also um, is sort of the umbrella person over technology in the district and they ensure that technology is being used for um, district operational measures as well. Um, but as you can see, the department is very, very small, not only because we have a small district, but likely because of um, issues with resources um, and funding. And like I've mentioned, many transformations have been occurring in the district, um, placing technology at the back burner, at the back burner. But as far as um, having a concrete team that tackles innovation and digital learning and its implementation um, and oversees the professional development trainings for technology, uh, that is currently not in, in ex existence, but um, they are working to create a concrete department uh, for technology. So um, like I have mentioned in past, presentations my district is 
definitely behind um, when it comes to digital learning and um, technology support for teachers and classrooms and students. Um, and so there's, of course, a lot of room uh, for growth and a lot of progress to be made. Okay, uh, so digital transformation in the classroom. Uh, as of now, smart boards are used every single day in my school to support in, um, the curriculum and to support instruction. Uh, students might interact with the smart board during, for instance, in my class, I know that we use smart boards for writing models. Um, students are able to model on the smart board. There are makeshift like um, whiteboards that you can pull up on the smart boards um, and students uh, can model for their peers and interact with with group projects in that way do smart boards we also do on-the-go research on smart boards during instruction um, and it's mostly used uh, for ELA supplement um, for reading supplement for lower grades Chromebooks, on the contrary, are given to math classes. Our department, our school is actually departmentalized, and so um, an ELA teacher may also teach social studies, and a math teacher may also teach science. And so Chromebooks are um, used to support their math instructional learning. Students actually use a program known as Zern. Um, Me. Students may use a program known as um, Zern, and what Zern does is that it allows students to remediate certain lessons and standards that they may not have completely mastered during whole group learning. Um, and so they're able to work one-on-one -on -one with their Chromebooks on the lessons that they haven't mastered to, to master them. And um, it's very personalized, and especially for math, it keeps them very engaged. Um, they're also given these workbooks that they uh, use as scratch as scratch paper and to work the problems out by hand before transferring them to the Chromebooks or vice versa. They can um, work the problem out on the Chromebook. The program does allow for that um, and it teaches you the methods. There, are, there is um, a voiceover that provides instruction to students and yeah. Uh, so my district has actually been praised for their use of Chromebooks um, in the math departments. So essentially the smart boards and Chromebooks have been used as instructional um, supplements. I know in the lower grades, a few teachers have began using, in the lower grades I mean kindergarten through second grade, which are the non-testing grades, um, a few teachers have moved to using tablets to support uh, student reading um, for sight words students who are behind on a uh, grade level um, reading. Okay, and with regards to learning, we do uh, have access to computer labs, the two fully stocked computer labs that are uh, well kept and the computers are, are actually most of the time always working. There's also a printer in there. Um, students can interact with the smart board in there and actually the smart boards are used to aid students in learning about um, keyboarding and learning about how um, computers can be used to do research which brings me to research-based projects which is what we um, do in social studies through from grades three through five um, students are given different tasks and and put in groups project groups and they're asked to conduct research in the computer labs um, and given the space to explore um, the only issue with this, and I'm not, I'm going to mention it now because I didn't uh, put it on the challenges slide, is, um, the censoring. Uh, we are still having issues with complete censoring so that students can browse safely and, um, that teachers can also be able to trust a little bit that students will be okay and take a few risks with instruction and, um, implementing technology within instruction and within project-based learning. Okay, so the current status of digital transformation and, and infrastructure operationally, um, 
technology is mostly used uh, for data storage, but even then we um, still file, um, let's say student grades, report cards, progress reports all by hand. Um, and those are kept for five years. And then I think probably, um, I'm not sure discarded or if, uh, I'm not sure if they're moved to another filing location. Um, however, I do know that we could have the capacity to um, store more data online. Um, it's just, you know, reaching out and getting the training to do, to use certain programs um, and the confidence to do so. Administration wise, uh, there have been a lot of complaints about everyday administrative tasks being performed by hand still. Teachers still have to take role by hand. We still use a role book. And so there's so many outdated, um, there's so many issues with, you know, technology being outdated or te technical use being outdated, um, especially when teachers have to sign in and the sign in sheets have to be put manually into the computer. It's very tedious. And, um, yeah, there's there's a lot of digital transformation opportunities there, especially administration um, wise, to be able to get things operating smoother um, at in the institution. Um, with communication, however, we do use programs like Class Tag and Class Dojo to keep parents in the loop regarding their students' performance and behavior. But um, even with that, um, we could do a better job in giving more parents uh, this access with perhaps giving them information on how they can better access it because then we will be able to increase participation um, in that aspect. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so some challenges and some opportunities. Okay, so first challenge would be technology leadership, innovative vision or lack of. Um, like I mentioned, there's only three staff in the technology department, um, none of them could be really considered true vi visionaries uh, who would be likely to be given the responsibility of creating a vision for the entire district or overarching goals. And so um, definitely uh, a whole new department needs to be rebuilt as is in the works. Uh, this this is an opportunity to cre curate a brand new vision for technology enhancement and digital transformation at all levels in the district. Um, the next huge challenge would, of course, be the lack of or the decrease in funding. As our CIR score is not very high, um, it creates um, more students leaving to other schools from our district, and um, the issue of us losing funding from the state for every child that is lost um, to another district. So one opportunity would be to create more buy-in for stakeholders through the curation of a progressive plan and viable goals and action steps. So it all goes back to, back to uh, leadership and having that strong leadership and the vision for transformation, which will create buy-in for stakeholders um, to give us the resources to put this plan into action. The third challenge would be infrastructure. Um, and for this, we have the opportunity to, to enhance current use of technology through mandatory training for teachers and school leaders. Um, a lot of teachers feel that it's completely unacceptable that we still sign in on paper, um, as well as take attendance on paper um, when there are so many programs out there and so many resources out there that could help us run these operation and administration tasks. Um, and it's really more, more so about whether or not we are able to create, number one, the vision, create the buy-in, and then the infrastructure um, that will lead us to that transformation. Um, and like I had mentioned before, sorry, under operational, I forgot to mention that professional develop coordin coordination and the lack of it through um, technology. Um, everything is done and i'm not sure if this is you know a rural challenge across the board um but i would expect that some of it might be a lot of things are simply outdated and simply not where they could be in terms of 2020 digital transformation that is happening across the state um that is happening in other rural 
uh, parishes. I know from being in a network with other teachers. Um, so yeah, this is um, a place where much growth has.